Boom, we're on week 17. I'm excited, obviously. Merry Christmas, Bish. Uh, hope you have a good new year as well. Um, it's me, myself, Joe Me The Money, and Ben Jones Bishop, also known as Ben uh, Best Bet Bish. <laughs> <laughs> I would call myself Joe Me The Money, but I think I've lost that title for the time being, Bish. I think I've got to earn that title back <laughs> once that comes back, but... We're on week 17, Bish. I think we're on about week five of us doing the betting preview. It's been fun. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, it's been, it's been very good, like you said, over the uh, over the holidays. So, you know, it's been nice to have a bit of NFL on in the background while spending a bit of time with your family. And obviously, we had that massive win as well, Christmas Eve. Tags yeah. touchdown treble coming in, 23 to 1. Oh. Uh, but, what, you know, that's that's paid for, for New Year's. You know, I've got, got a hot tub for kids. So, <laughs> 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 uh, I was looking forward to go. I said two more weeks, so uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's try and try and win some more money. Yeah, yeah, it did. It, 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 we needed that, didn't it? I think Tag also needed that. I, I, I was dropping in Sly. Uh, I was slaughtering him week on week eventually, and he's uh, he's proved he's proved me wrong, hasn't he? I think he's doing better uh, winnings than me now. So I'm I'm on it this week, Bish. I'm coming to take back the title of Joe Me the money. Uh, we'll get straight into it, Bish. Week, um, we've got the Miami Dolphins versus the New England Patriots. The Patriots are favourite in this game at minus three, and the over under is forty one points. What we're thinking? It's it's a funny game this one because I was you know I done my notes and I was just having a quick look before we jumped on, and a lot of these lines have moved now. I don't know whether it's this time of year and there's some games with nothing at stake and some with some with stuff. So. Um, this one's been one that's changed. You know, obviously, uh, two is in concussion protocol, so he's not likely to play. I think his third concussion of the year, which is obviously not very good. Um, so we've got Bridgewater coming in, um, and Bridgewater is is he's had two starts, um, lost them both. But more concerning for me is, well, I think he's a decent quarterback, and the way Mike McDaniel's plays, they'll still they'll still get the yards with with Hill and um, and Model, but. Is in both his starts, he's thrown at least one interception in both games, so um, that's something to look at. And, and the Patriots, their defense is, you know, is one of the best. I think the uh, the third um, in points of that, uh, the third in sacks, sorry, and uh, the second in interceptions. So a little sneaky one there for me is, you know, that one that I like over zero point five interceptions. I'm going to be on that this week for on Teddy Bridgewater. Um, some of the props are out yet, so I've not got a price on that, but that's one I'll be looking at. Um, result wise so this is actually swung and it's actually now Miami Dolphins plus two and a half so I've had a quick look at that um, I think it started at minus three because of obviously two are not playing um, but for some reason like I said I, I've just checked and the money's come in for Miami so and I'm actually on that I'm, I'm actually on Miami plus two and a half um, wow I think I just, I just think they're still. I, I did the game this morning, so that's moved within the. That's moved within the after. That's moved within the last. Yeah, game. it's, it's a, I, I, I don't know what to put it down to. A lot of these lines have moved since since I last looked, so I've had to double check. Um, but yeah, the Patriots. I think I've spoke about them before. They don't really score that many points. Um, the defense is is showing up um, as it does at home. Uh, probably they need a bounce back game after you know the Bengals last week. Um, they got they got beat pretty, com pretty convincingly. They, they pulled it back at the end, but they were twenty two nil down. Um, but for me, this one, yeah, I think Miami will still have enough to get it done. So I'm looking at Miami plus two and a half, and then I'm throwing in my Bridgewater over zero point five interceptions. I'll, I'll have a little bit on myself. Brilliant, yeah. Um, I'm. I think I'm with you. I think I'm with you because well, Miami have lost four straight, Bish. I don't. I, Four straight, which is shocking to me because I, I love watching them play. They've been one of my favourite teams this year to watch. Obviously, you can't you can't get over Tyreek, and then I've got a weird liking for Raheem Mostert. Don't ask me why. I just liked him when he played for San Fran, and I like him here. So I think I've got a bit of secret love for Miami. So I'm, I'm sticking with you. I think I'm taking any plus Miami in this game because I just don't believe in that. You, you've you've copied well. You've not. I'm copying what you're saying that. I don't believe in the offense. I think Miami have got enough, even with even with Teddy in. For some reason, Matt Tua's really good against Patriots. He's never lost against them. 
I know that's we're talking completely different quarterback, but I think it's just thinking about the team, the matchup. I think Miami might have Patriots number here. So uh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I've got plus three. I was going to take that. Obviously, if it's plus two and a half, I'm taking that even better. I'm, I'm a happier man. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm with you there, Bish. Uh, the over under. Uh, if anything, I'd take. I'd look at the unders. I can't see it. I think Miami done have run the ball a lot. Most and Jeff Wilson obviously been very good this year. Um, I, with Teddy, like you said, they might be. They, they might do a couple of throws. He, he can throw. He's just not. I think with Teddy, with watching him over the last couple of seasons when he's had starting job, he's just struggled in them bigger games. I know this sort of is a big game, so I might be contradicting myself, but it. But he's also playing himself for another contract next year, isn't he? He's getting older now, Teddy. He's done his he's done a, he's had a brilliant career. But he's probably playing to get another backup role on the team next year. So I think he can pull it off. And I think, yeah, all over that Miami plus two and a half now. Just to add to that as well, I think sorry, I missed it, but it's it's it is a huge game. It's obviously a divisional game, yeah. but Miami are holding on to that last wild card spot. Um and Patriots are just behind them, so it is it is a massive game. Um, so tight divisional game, yeah. Unders that seems about right for me yeah, as well. But yeah, I'm, I'm liking uh, Miami with the with the points. Yeah. Uh, next game, bitch. We've got the Carolina Panthers versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, the Bucks are plus minus three favourites here, and the over under is forty point five. Um, where, where are you going? Another huge one, another you know, divisional game for the for the um, Panthers are only one win behind, but they also beat them earlier on in the year, so they hold that head to head. So if the if they can obviously get this win, um, you know, it'll put them top of the division. And it's another one that swung. I think he uh, when I looked at it, the Buccaneers were minus seven, and now you know now they're minus three. So there's been a lot of money on the Panthers there, and I think last week Panthers running the ball. They run. They ran three hundred and twenty yards on the um, on the Lions last week, which hurt hurt me every time. You know, we I was on the the Lions minus two, so that absolutely killed me every yeah. time they touched the ball. They were just running through massive holes, so they're going well um, on the ground. And the books for me, they just the, the, they remind me a bit of um, um, sorry the the Denver Broncos quite a few years ago when Peyton Manning were there. He just manages games, um, Tom Brady. They're not prolific. Yeah. They're, you know, they're not really scoring a lot of points, but they're just getting the job done. It's ugly at times, and yeah, it's not ideal. I mean, they they came up against um, Cardinals' third string quarterback and just scraped by with a nineteen sixteen win. So, but in in the huge games, I just think probably Brady just has it can get him over the edge in this one. Um, I'm actually on the Panthers plus three, or is it? Sorry, the Panther is it four or three? I've got it as three now, but like you said, it's yeah, changing everything. Yeah, yeah. I actually I actually fancy that. I fancy the plus three. I, I think it'll be a tight game. Um but I just think yeah, I, I think the three points will, will be enough. Um Tampa Bay's last two wins have been by three points and by one point. So I expect a tight game, but yeah, I, I I like uh, I like the Panthers in this one and I'm just slightly leaning on the overs, but it, it won't be a bet for me. Um, I'm so I'm opposite to you there, though. That's why I can disagree with you, Bish. I'm on the unders on this one. I think, like you said, they're just the running, the running potential of Carolina has been phenomenal. The offensive line has been brilliant. I think all year, to be fair, that's probably what's kept them in the thing. The the fact that the quarterback has had time, whoever it has been, they've not done always loads of it, but they've they've had time. Uh, the running game has been phenomenal, even without McCaffrey, and they've all rallied around the new coach. Um, but I, I, I think Tampa Bay have got brilliant run defense, so I think that counters each other. And Tampa Bay's offensive, like you said, it's not I, it's so strange in it. From if you look back for that Super Bowl winning team, there's not many different pieces apart from Gronk, a couple on the offensive line. There's not massive differences, but obviously age age humbles everyone, doesn't it? Fish? So I think obviously Brady's caught up to Brady a bit. Yeah, and but the, the funny thing is for me, he's still like when you watch him, he's still he doesn't look like his arms, you know, he's still got it, I think. He can still sling it in there. It's just they just don't look like they just look dysfunctional, you know, the, with the struggle running the ball. 
you know, we, we've I think you spoke about Godwin before. You know, he's, he's his favourite receiver is is getting peppered. So it's just I don't know. The defense has taken a step back, but yeah. I guess the big time players at you know the the business end of the year. This is where possibly Brady can can pull them and sort of get them over the line. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm I'm on the unders. I'm staying. Yeah, like you said, either I think that's pretty good line. The plus three, I can see it being either way. Maybe Carolina can pull it off, but I'm probably swaying more towards the books. But I think that minus three, probably where if I predicted the score, it's probably where I'd have it. But I am yeah. going. The, I'm going the under bitch. I can't see many points happening in this game. I just I, I, I can't. Darnold's not been throwing that many interceptions, and I don't think that that it's it's not thrown an interception. I don't think since he's uh come on since he's uh, become the starter. But I don't think that's a compliment on Darnold. I think that just shows how much they've been running the ball. I don't think it's a yeah. <laughs> So I, I can see a very quick game here. And yeah, I'm taking the unders. I've got the New Orleans Saints, bitch, versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's go. We've got the Philly Eagles being minus six and our favourites. Uh, and the over-under is 42. Yeah. Saints again, that NFC South. So obviously, they're still in the hunt. You know, they'll be looking at that Carolina Bucks game we just spoke about. Interesting. Yeah. And they had a good win last week. I think we both picked them actually, plus two and a half. I think we had them against the Browns. So come from behind win, um, which obviously keeps a minute. Um, and then the Eagles, you know, they've been rolling really well, but obviously Hurts out last week. Minchu comes in, four turnovers, I think, um, as a team. And it sort, sort of knocked them back a bit. You know, Cowboys taking the gloss there off them a little bit, but you know they're still still well in contention. Um, they look really good. I think the biggest question mark is Hurts. Will he be playing this week? Will they save him? You know, and, and look to to rest his collarbone for the playoffs. Um, and on this one, um, I'm looking at Saints again here. I'm looking at Saints with with the handicap simply because I think they've got more to play for here. Um, they rallied last week from from a loss. Eagles with Minshew, if he plays, I think he's a decent quarterback, but elite probably not. He had a lot of turnovers, so yeah, I'm going Saints plus six and a half, and I'm looking at the overs. The overs? What mate? Sorry, why why the overs, Bish? Yeah. That's surprising for me. Bit, I think it's a bit low. Um, Forty-two. But, but yeah, I think that's. I think. I think Eagles could hit that. I think Saints could get to twenty. If Saints get to twenty, I'm I'm confident it can get to the overs. I think. Yeah, wow, well, Bish. Yeah, that's where. Yeah, again, I just I think we'll be disagreeing on these over under. I think just this point in the year now, I don't. I, I, I just the Saints have been good, and obviously, I think the calling cards there, defense. They're very good at game management. I just think I just think that I don't I think that forty two I, I don't know that scares me a bit I don't like you said the Philly Eagles I think they'll just be running the ball they'll be playing safe I think no injuries because that they've got a genuine chance of making the Super Bowl um, obviously after a terrible couple of years and I think this is their I think this is their I think this is their chance I think they'll just run the ball run them out Saints obviously with Kamara. Taysom Hill coming in, yeah. Um, but I've see, I, I'm also, I, oh, base, you're confused. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I'm just reluctant to go unders. I just like to see lots of points. <laughs> I'm just optimistic. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. You're right there, aren't you? New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve. They're hoping to be playing a bit. I'm just, I just think near the end of the season. A lot of these teams, except the Saints, will be in preservation mode, but I just don't think the Saints have got that many points in them. So I can see a very slow, grindy Saints maybe put doing a field goal to win sort of situation if it goes their way. If not, I think Philly win by 12 and it's cigars on the rack and Saints say, all right, next season. Hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's yeah, a but, good start. Yeah. Um, next game, Bish, we've got the Denver Broncos, the wonderful Denver Broncos versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, the Chiefs are minus 12 and a half favourites here, huge favourites, probably rightly so. And the over under is 42, uh, 45, I apologise. Um, that's, yeah. What, where are you at, Bish? 
Well, what what a Christmas day it was. I had a, had a lovely Christmas, and then I sat down for the the. Uh, well, it was in the background the the Rams Broncos and the Rams scoring fifty points is pretty phenomenal. So, <laughs> you know, it's it's been a bit of um, a bit interesting at Broncos. Obviously, they've they've got rid of the coach um, a lot. A lot going at Wilson. A lot, of, you know, a lot of things are being said. But he's, he's actually wide receivers have come out and backed him, which is, you know, it's from not an seen outsider. It. And, he said, what's they said? I'm, I'm, I've missed uh, that. Just Jerry Judy just saying, you know, some of the stuff coming out is, um, you know, it's, it's not needed really. And it says Wilson's the hardest working person he's, he's been around, and sort of Cortland Sutton jumped on the back of that. So you know, it's that's good to see. Obviously, getting round your getting round your quarterback. Um, and you know, I think everyone himself will say it's been a bad year, hasn't it, for for the Broncos and and uh, and for for our tag as well. So you know, I resisted sending him a message. You know, I let him have his Christmas day. I didn't didn't want to rub it in. So, but yeah, it's um, it's an interesting time for them. Um, and for me, I just think it gets a bit worse before it gets better for them. You know, the Chiefs. The you know we've spoke about them before, firing on all cylinders. Um, they actually played recently. Uh, around three, four weeks ago, uh, and the Chiefs won 34-28. I think they were 22, 27-0 up in the second quarter, um, and and then they let the Broncos come back into it a little bit. So for this one, 12 and a half, it's, yeah, it's a big number, isn't it? It's, it's, it's a huge number. Um, but I'm I'm going to ride with the with the Chiefs. You know, um, if if I was going to going to have a bet on this one, it, it'd be the Chiefs minus twelve and a half. But one one bet I am looking at is, and I actually locked in overs at um, forty three and a half for this one. Oh. Um, and that, that that would be one of my best bets. That I, I'm I'm putting that one in. I just think the the Chiefs are averaging twenty nine points a game. You know, they're, they're scoring for fun, and I could see them getting push. You know, a lot more than that. And then Denver, like I said in in the last game. They came back with a couple of touchdowns late. I, I can see that happening again. So, yeah, I think that's a that's a good one. Yeah, with your base, that's one of my best bets. Hopefully, we uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully the curse finally drops. But yeah, I'm uh, I'm all over that. Over, I think you know what I mean. Daft enough, Kansas City could do that alone. I, I remember saying it in a show. I'm, I've got to bring it up as a, I've got to give myself some credit because I've <laughs> not got much at the moment. Um, I said that the Broncos' defense, I think, would give in eventually. They've been they were phenomenal at the start of the season, but about two or three shows ago, I said they're just not. The energy doesn't seem to be there. They don't look as intense on it. Obviously, with the playoffs being out, there'll be some people who are pissed off. You know what I mean? I think they just don't seem quite on it. And I think the last couple of games have shown that. No offense, but the Rams should not be scoring fifty on anyone of where they're at at this moment. They shouldn't. That shouldn't even that should be, you know what I mean? So, point is, I I think Kansas City could even do that alone if the Rams can. Obviously, a, the coach has been fired. The new interim coach will be in place. Normally, teams do rally around a new interim coach, saying, you know what I mean? Not <laughs> not say anything bad about the previous coach, but the reports are shocking, aren't they? That the, this study was a joke of a coach. Russell come in. Uh, they, they hired him to get sorry. They hired him to get uh, Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers didn't come in. They got Russell, and it's all gone Pete Tong on it. So uh, I can see the Broncos rallying an offense, maybe getting a couple of touchdowns. But then I can see that you just can't stop this Kansas City Chiefs, whoever you are. Never mind a Denver's Broncos defense that are low, low on motivation, low on morale. I'm doubling up on the over forty five and. Minus 12.5 on Kansas City. And that's not even a slight on Denver. I could see this being the game of the day. Something like 45, 46 to 23. And, you know what I mean, Denver show, have a couple of positives there. But I think the Kansas City Chiefs are just that good. And I forgot, I've got it there. I've just seen they're still fighting for first play. They've actually got more to play for than Denver. They want that first place. They know how important home advantage is. Obviously, they've been there, done it on every stage away from home, at home. They want that home. They want that home game in front of the fans to make the Super Bowl, and I think that's what they're going to get with this game, Bish. Boom. Yeah, I, I like that. I was just about to to make that point. You know, number one seed um, is very important, obviously, with the Bills and, and now the Bengals picking up as well. So yeah, to have to to have to go through. Um, 
Arrowhead to get to the Super Bowl is, you know, that's a massive advantage for them. Massive. Um, next game, Indianapolis Colts versus the New York Giants. Uh, playoff implications, obviously, for the Giants here. They are favourites at minus five and a half. And the over-under is a paltry 39 points, Bish. Yeah, it's, it's a big one for the Giants. Like you said, it's a win and I, I think the, the playoffs is secured. So, you know, that's that's um, very good from where they've been at. Just the last five games, they've actually only won one and, and the tied one with, with the Commanders. So, um, you know, tough loss last week against the Vikings. And if we look at the Colts, just, I don't know, you know, we spoke earlier on in the air about the Texans being the worst team in football. I think now it's swung and the, and the Colts are... Um, you know, Nick Foles went in last week and he threw three interceptions and, and was sacked seven times. And it, you know, you just you just feel like off the back of that, obviously, big loss, um, the big lead they gave up at the Vikings as well. So it's not it's not gone well in there. Obviously, bringing Jeff Saturday in uh, one win in his first win, and then and then uh, um, you know losses losses throughout. So um, with this one, it, it's hard to look past the Giants. Obviously, the, the fire in Barkley, what a season he's had. He's, you know, he's probably won in a while where he's been healthy and played every game, which has obviously been, yeah. played a, a big part in, yeah. in where yeah. they're at at the minute. So, uh, yeah, for, on this one, it'd be the Giants. Um, although they're not big scorers, I still like them, you know, with, with the minus here. Um, over-unders, yeah, 39. Yeah. Uh, I hate to go under, so I hate, but it's, I just can't see the Colts scoring many points. Uh, no. I'm going to lean overs. If in doubt, lean overs. <laughs> in doubt, lean but, overs. Uh, yeah, it might, it might come back to bite me, that one. Because, you know, I think if you're looking at it, you would go under there. Just with the Giants, not massive scorers. The Colts don't look like they can score many points. So, yeah, but... The big one is is the, the Giants with a minus, I think. Yeah, I'm doubling up again, Bish. I'm going the unders here. Uh, you you made the argument for me, but then I think your love of the game has made you go. <laughs> yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm all over the unders on the. I can't see the Colts getting any points like at all. Maybe two field goals at best. They've, every time I've said that, though, they've ended up play, teams end up playing well. But I'm on the Giants. Yeah, the Giants are minus five and a half. I think they've got a couple of touchdowns in, in them. They want to cement that first playoff in since the infamous team with Odell Beckham and the squad. Um, I think Saquon, like I said, very happy for him. You, you, everyone wishes for good health, and he's he's had a first good healthy season in I think three or four years now. So he's he's, he's showing. Glim- not glimpses, but glimpses of his former MVP self. He's had a brilliant year. He's getting back up there now as one of the best running backs in the league. Uh, yeah, all over Giants and all over the under on this one. Giants maybe two or three touchdowns. In. They'll run the ball a lot here. They'll get a couple. I think they'll take a nice early lead and breeze the rest of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um- yeah, I, I might message Sam and change that to unders. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> <it. That's laughs> no, yeah, that's the love of the game. You you argued for the, the unders and then you went overs for the love. You've got to <laughs> stick to your guns, Bish. Stick to your guns. Uh, next game, Bish, the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Houston Texans. The soaring Houston Texans, may I add. Uh, but the Jacksonville Jaguars are favourites, uh, minus four favourites. And the over under is forty three and a half. Where are we at, Bish? Yeah, the Jaguars. Not not a team I've been able to to manage to to read this year. But they're flying at the minute, aren't they? I mean, the, this game not as important, but obviously the one next week against the Titans is huge. You know, winner winner takes the playoff spot, so that's a massive one. And it's an interesting game this this one for them. Do the rest of the starters, do they, you know, do they play everyone? The Titans played Thursday night um, and they rested quite a few. Um, I think I, I've seen, I've seen well, in the, some, some... I'll just oh, explain that, uh, that this game actually doesn't mean, even though it looks like it means something for the playoff implications, what you mean by that is this game, as shown by the Titans game, it's all about next week, isn't it, for these two, for the Titans and Jacksonville, for... 
I don't for it do not it literally does not matter apart from the game next week. So yeah, just a bit of explanation to why both teams are looking to rest a few players. Yeah, the the only thing is getting through healthy. That's it. Getting your starters through healthy, um, ready for next week. And I've I've seen a few uh, quotes from Trevor Lawrence that you know they're planning to to play their starters and and you know and treat it as a as a normal game. So can they get off to a flying start and then possibly pull a few players out as the game goes on? We'll see. And it's funny one for the Texans because you know the Texans are hitting form. We'll say hitting form. They're playing a lot better. Obviously, had a big win last week against the Titans, which allows the Jaguars to be in this situation. But they're actually they only need one loss from the last two games to secure the number one spot overall for the draft. <laughs> so they're actually probably outperforming as an organisation what they want to happen, which is which is an interesting one. And actually, week eighteen they play the Colts, which, as you'd say now, is very much a winnable game for them. Um, so this is this is a key game for me. I think that they need to lose. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> players, you don't you, you don't step on the field wanting to lose. Obviously not. Um, but it's it's a it's a big game for them. And even with the Jag situation going on, I, I think the Jags will be too good here. The, the minus four, but I do like the overs in this one. You know, the Texans are scoring points, um, and we've seen what the Jaguars can do. You know. Trevor Lawrence is, is throwing left, right and centre. And if they do want to get off to a to a good start to allow them to to sort of ease back in the second half, they're going to need to start fast. So, um, yeah, it'd be Jags minus four, but I'd, I'd be on the overs. So I've got um, I've got my interesting one here, just on the back of um, what you said there, Bish. I've got Trevor Lawrence getting uh, two throwing touchdowns here. I think they're going to let him throw, get get into his rhythm. Like I said, that Texan defence has been horrendous. The run defence especially has been bad. So I think they're just going to run the ball with Etienne and then let Lawrence get them red zone touches to maybe prepare him for next week when the pressure's on, when he needs to land a play, land a touchdown. I think they'll be... So I've got him. Um, I don't think the um, touchdown is, is on for this one. Yeah, I've not seen it, but... Whatever it is for Trevor, I'm on. And I think normally it's one one and a half in it, so I'd, I'd take that. If it's two and a half, something crazy. I don't see it being that, but if it is, stay away because I can see it being around there. But yeah, over one and a half touch, throwing touchdowns for Trevor Lawrence is one of my best bets uh, for the game, Bish. Nice, I like it. He's, he's got a lot of weapons out there, hasn't he, that he seems to be finding. So yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, like you said, the Texans, it makes sense for them to lose, even though, as they always say, the players never want to lose. You yourself being a player, you never want to lose, whatever you situate. I'm just, you've been in every situation in the book yourself, aren't you, Bish, to be fair? But you never lose, you never want to lose. But as you may know, as you might not know, I don't know your hit career with owners, but sometimes them owners, if they say something, the, the coach has sometimes got to follow Annie. So whatever happens, yeah. sometimes the, things might be put in place by the higher ups that make we need that number one draft pick. We need, we 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 need. I think it's the linebacker, isn't it? It's that linebacker that's meant to be number one in the draft, uh, in the mock drafts at moments, and that they'll be wanting him. The running backs also, but the, you they never you never take running back as your number one pick. It's known as suicide. You're, you're not meant to take a running back in the first round, but they're all after him. Um, he's going to be fantasy's number one pick next year. I've heard though, Bijan Robinson, who believe is it? Yeah, that's that's the guy. Yeah, I think the last team that took a running back really early was obviously the Giants with Saquon Barkley. So yeah, it's uh, interesting. Time, it? It's not it usually happen. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, no, Jacksonville all over. Trevor Lawrence, get, he'll get some throwing touchdowns here. Um, Cleveland Browns, Bish, versus the Washington Commanders. Uh, Washington, in my opinion, are rightly so, minus two favourites. Uh, Cleveland Browns, obviously, plus two. Uh, not much to play for, but where have, where have you got it, Bish? Can you see Cleveland uh, dashing Washington's playoff hopes here? I've, I can't. I think it's going to be a, a tight game. I can't, um, you know, an interesting one for the commanders is Carson Wentz is coming back. You know, he's, he's been announced as the starter um, and he didn't get off to the best of starts at the beginning of the season. You know, he started the first five, got not, uh, got injured in the, in the six, but the first five, uh, he had four interceptions in the first five games. 
Um, and his actual winning record was one and four. So they didn't get off to the greatest of starts. Um, but I just think with what's on the line, as we've spoke about, you know, the, the holding on to that last playoff spot, I just think there's more in it for them. There's, there's more, um, more on the line for them. But these two teams, they're number one and two ranked in terms of times of time of possession. Yeah. We've spoke about the Browns before. Nick Chubb, you know, I think even last week he had um, over 90 yards and 24 carries. You know, <laughs> low scoring, just grind, grind. Uh, yeah. Same with with Washington, with um, with Robinson as well. Um, so I, I'm I, I do like the Commanders here. I've I've actually got on them at minus one and a half. I managed to get that. Um, okay, and I also like the unders. Like I said, I, I just see it on the ground, low, turgid sort of you know game. Um, yeah. As as we've said, you know we keep saying the lines aren't out yet, but I am looking at Chubbs. Um, Rushing yards over the last two weeks, I think he's he's hit over ninety meters, um, ninety yards the last two weeks. So I'd be having a look at that as well, just to just to see where that's at. Brilliant, yeah. Same as you, base. I'm on Washington minus two. At the Browns, Watson. The, the the theme of this year seems to be don't <laughs> don't bring in overpaid quarterbacks. Obviously, Watson's come in, not played that well. It's a bit harsh on him, but I'll I'll chuck I'll rope him in. Wilson, um, obviously Matt Ryan. There's been a lot of quarterbacks that swap teams that are getting up on the older end of things. Watson probably doesn't fit into that, but like I said, probably deserves to be. <laughs> we'll chuck him in, but yeah, the older quarterback moving team doesn't seem to have much much success at all. They've tried it over a couple of years, multiple teams. So I'm on. I'm all over Washington. All over Washington. They've got good defense. Uh, they did, yeah. I'm, I just can't see it. But like you said, the unders as well. They both. They're both rushing teams. They both dominate possession. They both get first downs very easily rushing the ball. I can't see how either team gets forty points here. Washington's defense is very good. Cleveland Browns not as good, but I, I can't see it. I can't see it going that way where it's this high throw, high scoring. Shoot out. It's just not how this game is meant to pan out. So yeah, all over the under and on Washington, I think they'll I think they'll pull up on this and uh, give themselves a playoff shot. I think we're both agreed there, Bish. We're actually agreeing a lot. We're rarely disagreeing here, Bish. I like it. Yeah, we, we start we started dig- disagreeing early, and now we've sort of come <laughs> yeah, together now. Yeah. There's a bit of harmony in there. <laughs> Next game, Bish, second to last, Chicago Bears versus the Detroit Lions. The, Li- the Lions, minus six favourites. And the over-under, Bish, I know you love you love the over-under. For, you love the overs for Detroit, but this has got to scare you at 52 on these two teams. Yeah, I'm, I'm kicking myself last week. You know, Last week, I took the Lions minus two and a half and... I don't know what I was thinking because I went away from the overs and the overs came in comfortably. So, I, but it's two weeks in a row the lines have let me down now. So I'm just yeah. taking a bit of a backward step from them um, in terms of best bets wise. But they've still got obviously a lot to play for. They're in the mix, you know. Last week probably hurt them quite a bit, you know, that loss. And it just looked like the Panthers every time they touched the ball, there were just gaps everywhere. You know, they were just running through untouched, um, which which is a bit. A bit troubling, really, especially coming up this week against Fields. You know, he's, we've spoke about him. He's electric. He's great to watch. Um, the Bears obviously run the ball a lot with Montgomery. Um, Herbert was back last week, so possibly gets a bit more involved this week. Um, I'm still looking at a Lions win, just with the Bears. You know, they've lost the last eight. They're struggling. Um but I, yeah, it's it's for me though. I like Fields a lot in this game, just obviously based on last week on what on what the Carolina Panthers did. Um, so actually, a bet I'm looking at is Fields rushing yards. Um, it's seventy point five yards. Um, he had a blip last week against the Bills. He got shut down against the Bills, but he's hit that in in the four before that. Um, so I, I, you know, I think he gets back to it. Um, the Bills defense sort of stifled him a lot last week, and obviously the weather. And the wind didn't help, so I think he gets back to that. Um, but I still like the Lions um, with with the minus here. Um, but the, but for me, I really like the 
just uh, yeah, the fields rushing yards. Yeah, uh, Bish, we're disagreeing, pal. I'm all over Chicago. <laughs> I think Detroit's a bit there. I think they've hit the peak now. I think they're frazzling out. I love Detroit. I've said it. I love watching them. I love the way. I love Dan Campbell. I've rewatched. I've rewatched uh, the the season. What's it called again? Hard knocks. I've rewatched Hard Knocks actually the other day. I love him. I love. I love it all. But I just don't think they've got the talent on that team yet, Bish. They've got amazing players. They've got hard work. That's obviously all the show was about. These hard working. Uh, willing to win guys. I just think they need a season or two to get one or two more superstar players, get another arm on Raw in, on the defensive side. Get uh well Goff's been pretty good, but I think they just need to overall just get this depth there, get that quality on the defensive side. And I think they've just frazzled out a bit now, Bish, but no disrespect to him to say that I think looking at the season they're at, anyone but Dan Campbell would have been surprised at a seven eight season at this point. And fair play to him. Uh, but I'm actually taking Chicago plus six and the under, doubling up. It's my best bet. I think Chicago uh, have close games. I think they fam- infamously have pretty close games. Like they run the ball a lot. It's quite hard. They've got an okay-ish defence. Fields has been brilliant. Montgomery's back fully healthy now for the last week or so. Uh, I think I think Chicago can try to control the game from the start. Give it a good go. Run the ball a lot. I can't see it anywhere near foot 52. Um, so I'm going Chicago and uh, the under of 52, Bish. Yeah, I, I, like you said, it is a high number, that overs. And I was a little bit, you know, I was staying away from that. And it's yeah, it's interesting. The, the and Bears. Division, games, division games don't famously, famously, I don't have the exact stat, but everyone says that I've watched it. Everyone says division games, you don't, they don't score that much. Because it's tense, it's tight. They don't like each other. These division teams, the rivalries on. Fans from both sides fill the stadiums, and I can't. It's just a, it's going to be a close game, a rushing, hard nosed game. This one, I think. Um, yeah. And the and final. Game, each... Oh, sorry, pal. So I just I was just going to add with you playing each other, you know, twice a year, every year. You also mm. know the other teams, you know, what they're good at and what what they're not good at. So it's sort of, you know, that. that it, it allows for that tight game, like you were saying. Yeah. And then final game, the Arizona Cardinals, my disappointment of the season versus the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons are favourites in this one. Um, where have you got, Bish? Yeah, Cardinals, very disappointing, aren't they? It's, it's been disappointing. Kyle Murray injured this week. JJ Watt comes out and says he's, you know, this is his final season as well. So, yeah, yeah it's... Um, They've not been great. Only four wins on the year, but I think one 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 person that has, you know, been good for him is James Connor. You know, he's been consistent. He was, you know, he, I think he led the leading touchdowns last year. You know, he scored pretty much for fun every week, and he's been similar this week. Um, he scored um, six uh, rushing. Sorry, scored six touchdowns in his uh, last six games. Five of them being rushing touchdowns. Um, so he's he's always reliable. Um, and they've got Colt McCoy coming back this week. They were down to the third string quarterback last week against the Bucks. So they've got Colt McCoy coming back. And like you said about the Falcons, you know, you spoke about Algier a lot. You know, they run the ball. But now that they can't make the playoffs, do they fizzle out a little bit? I think I think they probably do. Um, and just with that added sort of thing for the team, for the players of JJ Watt retiring, I'm actually leaning um, with the Cardinals on this one. I like, I like the Cardinals plus three. I just think that added motivation. It, I think players speaking for myself, you know, it, it means a bit. You know, you, you're playing for your teammate who's been an incredible defensive player. You know, probably is. Well, I think it's fair, fair to say most people have put him in the Hall of Fame once once he gets to that point. You know, he's, yeah. he's been tremendous. Yeah, so I think I think that that adds a little bit for for the next two games, and it'll give him that little bit. Uh, but one one bet that will be my best bet. Is, as I've talked about, is James Connor anytime touchdown? You know, he's he's at actually decimals two point three, so he's over even to score a touchdown. And you know, he's, wow. as I said, he's, he's scored in his last six. So, uh, um, you know, I, I, I like that bet. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, and another added one. They're probably playing for Clins- uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Clinsbury's uh, 
career here, isn't they? If, he, if they finish the season with two more losses, he's fired, guaranteed. I know that's a bit harsh, but you can't go into a season 4-13, and 13, can you, with the team he had, even with injuries. I think they're playing for his poly career. I think they do like him. I think they've got, they always rally around him. They, I think I, I'm with you, Bish, just to back up your point about the Arizona. I think they'll, they've will they lost five in a row. I don't that they, they've been decimated. This has been the injury team of the year. But I've, I'm all over. I'm all, yeah, I think with you, Arizona, the playing, playing for the coaches thing, they like him. Uh, they've had a bad skid with injuries. But I believe, yeah, I believe they'll, I believe they'll win the last two and end the season on a slight high. Obviously, can't they should have been making the playoffs comfortably. But I think um, with a, a bit of happiness, let's get two wins and let's head into next year with uh, less injuries. So yeah, with your bish. I see. It's, it's a shame how they, they handled the sort of the Kyler Murray situation. It seemed to to have an effect and spiral, you know, yeah. in performances after that, but. Yeah, it's you know obviously they're in a tough division in, in the NFC West, but yeah, they, they should be performing a lot better than what they are. Simple, yeah. The yeah, Arizona plus three, I'm all over it with you, Bish. Brilliant. Well, it's time, Bish. It's time for Bish's best bets. Give us them, Bish. What have you got? Well, let's try and get that full house. Um, so my, my number one pick is James Connor anytime touchdown. Brilliant. My number two is Miami Dolphins plus two and a half. And Brilliant. my third and final is Broncos at Chiefs over 43.5 total points. I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. I've got no yeah little complaints there, Bish. Brilliant. Let's go. Come on. Let's, <laughs> let's end the season these last two weeks on the high. And I'll give it. I'm here to make some people some money this week. It's New Year's Eve. You'll be spending a lot of moolah. It's time I bring some back for, into your wallet. Um, I've got the Kansas City Chiefs double over 45. I've got, but take the overs, whatever, unless it gets up to 48, 49, 50. I'm taking the overs and I'm taking the minus 12 and a half double. I'm going for it. I think Kansas City have got this all over. I think Denver might play well, which means getting them 21 points for Denver this year, 28. But I I'm literally that confident in the Chiefs just destroying that defence at the moment, that defence that's getting worse and worse. My next one is the under in the Cleveland Browns and Washington game. Doubled up again. I'm going double crazy with the Washington Commanders, obviously winning the game with the minus two handicap. I think Washington will cover that. And I think it's got to be under in that game with two teams who dominate the ball. Brilliant rushing teams. Lovely little double for you there. And then my third one, Bish, I've, this is what I've been going back and forth on. I don't really have a confident third one, which is a shame. But if I am, I'm gonna. I'm going. I'm. I'm going to go. Trevor Lawrence over. I said it, the, the line's not out yet, so that's why I'm floundering a bit. I think it will be at one point five touchdowns, and I'll take the over on that. Bish, I think he'll get over. I think he's gonna get two, three. Uh, so go off that off your will. Obviously, if it gets up on your betting ones, just two point five. Take it with caution, but I'd still maybe have a glancing glancing bet on it but if it's 1.5 get your money on it I think they're going to let Trevor throw in that red zone this week boom nice <laughs> um, and then Bish have you got Tags touchdown treble I've got it Tags obviously riding a high from uh, from last yeah. week and he's he sent me it across just as just as we started recording um, so this week he's, he's gone with DeAndre Swift Mike Evans and Daniel Jones, and that comes in at 17 and a half to one. So, you know, he's, he's obviously hit last week, and I like what he's done this week. He's thrown another a running quarterback in there with Daniel Jones. You know, he, he hit the Sean Watson last week. So, come on, Tag, let's do it back to back. On, uh, tag. Yeah, that would, that would make a lovely New Year's present, wouldn't it? And lovely little <laughs> when I'm out in the uh, when I'm out on town on New Year's Eve and I see that come in, it uh, would be at nine o'clock. I'm in my Eighth beer, and I'll just look in that my my wallet's uh, doubled in size. I'll be uh, I'll be buzzing. 
Uh, and then just a bit of um, just a bit of thing. We still got the giveaway going on, so that is basically you went over it last week, and it well, it's the same this week. Do you want to quickly roll over it, Bish? Yeah, we'll go over it again because obviously the sound wasn't great last week. But um, we're looking for your best bet, qualifying odds of evens or over. If you win, um, you're in the hat for the live for the giveaway on the live show um, the eighth of January. So yeah, we've we've got a few entries. Um, you know, we've had a few sent sent to us, but we, we need your comment on on Twitter or on on the YouTube. Um, so yeah, get get them in, please, and then uh, you'll be straight in the hat for the live draw. So we're looking looking forward to that on the live show. Brilliant, yeah, get them in. Like I said, two tickets to any Super League game you pick this season. Uh, brilliant, brilliant prize. Just get your scores in. Let's let's have some fun. Uh, going on from that, leading perfectly again. Red Zone live returns. We've actually done pretty. We actually did pretty well on these. Based, they're live. We're back. Join join us eighth of January, uh, final week of the season. There'll be drama everywhere. Every single game. Bish, how many games is there? Thirteen. Uh, possibly, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I've not had a check, but um, we just. I think we're still waiting to see what happens this week in terms of. The, obviously, the TV games getting decided, but there'll be a, a large chunk in that in that six pm window. So yeah, there'll be uh, action and drama from uh, from the get go on that one. Everywhere, it'd be brilliant. Dad's coming on. We're getting debates. Another thing you can do for us guys, if you want to message us personally, if you know us, or chuck them in the comments. Uh, we're, we're getting the debates on. We're going to get on. We've got a few things we're going to debate. We're all going to bring our facts uh, and we're, we're going to get it on in between it all as we're watching uh, the season's climax. So get on, get some get some debates on that we can all have an argument over and have a laugh with. And you can join in, obviously, on the live chat as you're watching in with us. Uh, and then finally, keep liking, keep subscribing, keep sharing it. We're doing all right. We're still wanting to grow. We still want to make this a regular thing. Please join us, guys. Uh, obviously, it's going to be even bigger and better next season. This has more been a taste of what's to come. We're bringing out the big guns next year. We'll probably be live in studio, live at the Show Me Studios. Hopefully, most of the time, we'll be there'll be more giveaways, more guests on. We're going to, but we thought we'd build a nice audience this season by getting you some money in the pocket. And Tag certainly did that last week. <laughs> but yeah, thank you, Bish. Villa, brilliant. Hope you love Christmas. Hope you have a brilliant New Year's, pal. Last words. Yes, it's, it's been great. As you said, we're building. So any suggestions, any comments, please get them in. Any questions, get them in. You know, we're on the live show. And yeah, all the all the viewers, hope you've had a great Christmas. And uh, I hope you have a new happy new year as well. And uh, a prosperous 2023. Come on, Bish. Let's have a big New Year's Eve. I want to wait. I want to be eight pints in. Party, check, check my betting account. Let me put that over to the bank. <laughs> Let me pay for the New Year's Eve. Let's go. Good luck, Bish, and uh, see you probably on the 8th of January now, pal. Yeah, looking forward to it. See you.